Um, okay, I'm just going to run through with you uh, video editing basics using Adobe uh, software company, Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, uh, first of all, open up your software. Uh, now the techniques applied here are essentially basic video editing. Um, the idea of video editing which can be applied across uh, many different types of video editing software. Um, so uh, we're using Adobe Premiere Pro, but similar idea applies to iMovie, uh, Final Cut, um, Avid to a degree. So, uh, but Premiere Pro is a really good uh, professional grade uh, editing software. Uh, it's quite easy to pick up and is cross-platform, so it works across uh, Windows and uh, Apple Macintosh software, operating systems. Okay, so you've got your software open. Let's start with a new project. You get this little window here. Uh, first of all, let's give it a name. Let's call this Video Edit 1. You call it whatever you like, obviously. Just below that, it's quite important. Uh, it tells you where this project is going to live. Um, generally, it'll plop it somewhere quite random. Um, not here. It often will just plop it into sort of the, the Adobe uh, software folders. You can sort of get a hard time trying to find it. So I would make sure you know where it's going to live. So keep your uh, projects all in one happy space. I'm going to pop mine on the desktop. I'm going to make a new folder for the project and call it Video Edit One, just so I know where things are. Uh, it may seem a bit um, uh, sort of fussy to be sort of sure where everything are and naming things properly, but trust me, in the long run, at some point we are trying to find that random sequence number three. Uh, you want to know where it is, and you want to give it a sensible name that you can remember that isn't too generic. Okay, uh, don't worry too much about the rest of those. Um, that's how your video gets rendered if you've got a graphics card or not. That's um, don't worry too much about that. Uh, don't worry about that either at the moment. And that's if you are importing um, uh, video tape, digitizing video tape to video, which you probably won't be doing at the moment. Scratch discs. Don't worry about that. That's just where uh, RAM and cache get saved. So you know where it is. Giving it a name. Click OK. Now you should, in theory, have um, a uh, setup looks similar to this. It's just sort of broken into four kind of sections here. Uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, don't worry if you don't see this bar on the side. That just might be due to um, uh, your particular screen resolution, your setup. Um, a good place to sort of make sure you know that everything is looking as it should do. If you go up to workspaces um, and reset to save layout, okay, it's back. This is how sort of the default layout. Uh, you may find um, that it looks like different at times, or you'll accidentally pull a, um, a sort of uh, a window out or something. And if you think, oh, that's not how it looked, just go back to window, workspace, reset, save layout, and it gets you back to to how you think you want it to be. Actually, I'm going to make sure this is in editing. There we go. This is probably what you can see. Okay. Um, so, uh, this is a good place to start down here. Import your media. So, where it says import media to start, you can either double click uh, here, you can right click to import, or you could go to file, import. I'm just going to double click so it's nice and easy. And I happen to have a nice folder of video resources on my desktop. Included in there is the audio file which I'm going to be editing. So I am going to grab the whole lot. If you've got any folders in there, try not to collect the folders as well. Uh, if you want to, if you've selected files and you want to not select a particular file, um, just press Command and then click on the file, and it won't import that one. But I'm going to bring all these ones in for now, that all looks good, they're all video files, there's um, uh, slightly different video file formats, there's one image there, a PNG, and there's also an audio file, I'm going to import all of that, shouldn't take too long, plop, and there they all are, down there, great stuff, now, uh, this area here is your timeline, this is where you'll create what's called a sequence, uh, which is where you'll be doing a lot of your editing. There's currently no sequence there at the moment. Now, you can literally just drag some media into from here into here, and it will create a sequence um, to the resolution and the format that you've dragged in. However, 
Some of these are slightly different sizes, so to make sure you know the dimensions and the frame rate um, of your uh, video, I would start off by setting up a new project, a new sequence rather yourself manually. So go up to File, New, Sequence. Here's a load of different file formats, camera formats, ARIA is sort of essentially a big uh, proper movie motion picture, film camera, you've got various different things there, different digital SLRs, um, digital video, uh, HD video tapes. I'm going to start with this project. In theory you could have a play around, pick any of those, but I certainly if you're importing video from a digital SLR you want to start up here, depending on the size of your uh, footage. We'll go through screen resolutions and stuff properly at a later date if you're not clear on that. I'm going to go into mobile and devices and click iPod. Um, that gives us 640 pixels um, high, um, sorry, uh, across, so horizontal, and 480 pixels vertically, so it's 640 by 480. Uh, it's quite a small screen resolution, but a lot of these clips are uh, taken from uh, archive.org when things are digitized, I don't know, maybe uh, six, seven years ago, uh, things like smaller rate, uh, a lot of these also I've taken from my own personal VJ archive, um, and I often, uh, well I used to always uh, beam at quite a small resolution, it just makes life a lot easier uh, in that sort of setup, and projectors are very forgiving, however for this uh, it's good demonstration purposes, and to be honest when you're sticking stuff on YouTube it kind of defaults to about that anyway, if not a bit smaller. So. Uh, I'm happy with that, however, I am going to make sure in my settings, so sequence presets, I've clicked that one, that's great, but I notice here frame rate is 15 frames a second. Um, I'm going to change that to 25 frames a second, simply because 25 frames a second is more akin to normal um, TV frame rates. Um, frames a second is essentially BPM for uh, your footage. Um, so. Cartoons are often about 12 to 15 frames a second. Uh, movie pictures are 24 frames a second. TV, most videos online, 25 is a nice, good, easy number to go with. So we'll go with that. 640 by 480, that's great, great, great. Don't want to change any of that. That's all fine. Yep, happy with that. Cool, now I've got a timeline. Check it. So, uh, let's get some footage in the timeline. I'm going to start off by, because I've got a, a separate audio track, you may not always have a separate audio track, um, but in this case I do, and I can see that's uh, audio there, it's got a little waveform, uh, one below it, it's got a little sort of film, celluloid film clip and a little waveform, so I know that's probably video with audio, and some of the other ones don't have any audio. If you're not seeing this window, the project window, in a list, you might be seeing it down here as sort of thumbnails. Um, thumbnail view is quite good if you're not familiar with your footage. Uh, whoop, gives you uh, oh yeah, a mouse issue there, right? Yeah, gives you a good idea of what your footage looks like, um, and it also indicates there, look, with that little waveform, if it's got audio or not. Okay, uh, I'm going to work in list view just because I know what a lot of these are, but I may switch back and forth. Um, so first, of all, I'm going to bring the audio there. That's the uh, M4A file, uh, it's basically MPEG audio format. I'll drag that down here, and you'll see I can't plop it in there. There's a little cross on my hand because I can't put it in the video. The V is for video, but I can put it in audio. I could put it in any of these layers I want to. Uh, I don't really mind which one you plop it into audio 2, audio. I'm going to put it in audio 1 um, simply because I'm going to, but it doesn't really matter where you put it. Uh, but you'll see when you try and import audio with video, that'll try and sort of splay the audio either side. And if that was down there, it might plop the other audio at the top. Um, anyway, so we've got some audio. And to check it's working, we can either scrub through here. Scrub that. Or just press play. Okay. Press spacebar, rather. And that'll play. Just like on a lot of other audio editing software. Spacebar is the play button. Uh, let's get some video in. I'm going to start at the top just because. And if you double click on one of these, and also it happens if you um, mm, 
double flick on these clips. Oh god, there wasn't. There we go. If you double click on the actual video file that pop up there, either or, you get your video footage here. Um, you could just drag it straight onto the timeline. I might end up doing that with some clips in a bit. Um, but this makes life a lot easier because you can see the whole clip, especially if you've got a really long clip. You might have some clips that are like 20 minutes long and you just want a couple of seconds or a minute at the most or something like that. So I'm going to click through here and just scroll, scrub through here rather and decide, right, I'm going to start it at that point. And if you want to be more precise, you can use your um, arrow keys to scroll through frame by frame. I'm going to start it there, I'm happy with that. You can either hit that button there to mark your in point, which is where it's going to, the start of the cut is going to be, or you can press I. And I'm going to take it through to the end of that shot, which is there, and scrub back. Yep, exactly there, and then that little bracket, O, or press O, and you get out. Um, I'm going to drag this into here. By here, you can see a little film icon and an audio icon. You can see the little uh, title that pops up there. That literally does what it says. If there was audio on that, that wouldn't be greyed out, and I could drag just the audio. Because uh, this is just video, I can only drag the video. Or you can, if you've got both enabled, you could drag the whole lot. So I'm going to plug that in there, and again, I can't put it in the audio layer. It's going to go in a video layer. Um, and then pop it in video one, sort of base layer. Okay, that looks good. Now, as you can see, there's a bit of a black border on the actual footage itself, which I'd quite like to get rid of. So, I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to change the size of the video, the scale of it. Now, all the video clips have a very basic uh, number of effects. If you select the clip you want, uh, up over here, you've got that sort of source window. There's some tabs along here. Now, effect controls. This will apply to whatever clip has been selected. So I've got a clip selected, there'll be nothing there. If you select a clip, it'll be applied to that clip there. Uh, it's a few little options. I'm going to start at the top. There's motion. Um, and I can change the position if I want to. I'll look at that in a sec. But I want to just increase the size of this a little bit. And it's easy enough. You have two options. You can either drag the numbers with your mouse like that or you can click that little down arrow and usually that little arrow toggles more options so it gives you a little more oh, can I get bigger? okay, I'll have to use this then um, fair enough, cool so for some reason it's that scale then it goes to top to top but if you go up here you can scrub that bigger so I'm going to do that there, that's good so Okay, this is great, but I'm editing video to audio. Um, if you are cutting a, um, sort of a piece of video music, uh, ideally you want to know where the waveforms are, where the dips and the troughs are, peaks, and you can really sort of then start cutting things quite accurately. In order to show the waveform and a bit of a thumbnail in the video, so you know what's going on, so this little spanner or wrench there, if you click that, go down to expand all tracks, boom, we've got that there. And if you need to zoom in at any point to your timeline, down the bottom here there's a little scroll bar. If you grab that end, you can zoom right in and get quite a lot of detail out of it, which is quite handy, but we don't need that much detail for now, so I'm going to keep it trimmed to about there. So let's just see what's going on here. Now, I want this first clip to stop as the guy starts singing. So, again, using my arrow keys in this area, I can scrub along the timeline just to where he starts singing. And if I want to get rid of the rest of this clip, I've got two choices. I can either select the razor tool here and you can sort of move your razor along and you'll sort of notice there's two little arrows at the top and bottom, white arrows. That kind of denotes once they're selected, if you click around there, 
it'll chop it exactly where that play headline is. Okay, so that now has created two separate clips, and going back to my main default selection tool or V, I can then select one of those clips and delete it, or I could cut it, or I could move it, I could paste it, do whatever I want to. But I'm happy with that. Um, the other option that I could have done is literally still keeping on the selection tool, go to the edge of any clip and you'll see that little red bracket and arrow. That shows you you can just drag, move things in. While you're dragging stuff around like that, you'll notice the clip kind of snaps quite well to wherever the playhead is. Um, that's because there's that little icon on there, snap for S. If that's not on that magnet, then you won't. It'll be sort of a bit more floppy. Uh, sometimes you might not want that on if you want to get a bit more accuracy out of it, but be warned, it means when you're dragging clips along, they won't sort of connect to each other necessarily. You might end up with black gaps that you don't want. So by and large, this sort of snapping tool is your friend. Cool, got my first clip in. I'm happy with that. Let's get another clip in. Um, let's go for this one here. If I double click here, I can see what footage I've got. That's quite nice. I'll start it there. There's my in point. That's my out point. And again, audio is not selected. I'm just drag that in to there. And now I've got a real nice clean cut. So, um, happy with that. Now, I'm going to find a bit of footage that's a little bit smaller than this main window. Um, it means we can sort of start doing a little bit of animation if we wanted to. Um, there's a, there we go. Tomorrow's World Mobile. Let me select that there. Oops. Double click on the actual icon itself to show it up. Now this has audio on it. It's a, um, a clip from the 1980s about how to about the future of mobile technology. Now, digital information. I'm going to find a little bit with a bit of audio. That's quite an achievement. Dial yourself. There we go. Let's go for dial yourself. Is it device allows you? Right. I'm gonna start it there. To dial yourself. And again, I'm pressing spacebar to start and stop this um, uh, this playhead here. Now I'm gonna click O. And as you see, as I mentioned, because you've got audio in here, you've got the video and audio, which it possibly you can use. Now, I am going to drag all of this, because I always use it as a bit of a sample. I'm going to plop it in, actually, up at the beginning of that other clip. Actually, I'm going to drop it in here for now, just so I can... Which if I do that, what's probably happened is... There we go. My audio is down there for some reason. I can drag that up to that next layer though, so that's great. No. So I'm just do that again. As I drag the video and audio in, you'll see I've got the audio uh, down in the audio layers, and the video clip is up in the top. If I did that, that's fine as well. Um, yeah, that's all looking great. What you don't necessarily want to do is be careful sometimes when you're dragging clips in, the audio might cut through your main time audio timeline, which you do not want to happen. So if that's the case, then drag them up to another layer and they'll go to, the audio will go down exponentially. So I'm gonna drop that in there, I'm happy with that. I actually want to bring the audio up, but you can still just do that manually, it's fine. Now let's just play this. To dial yourself. I'm sitting. Okay, quite like that. Now, you'll notice again um, that clip. So just drag this down to a bigger window at the top. 
that clip's smaller than the one below it. Um, whereas with audio, uh, in your multi-tracking, uh, all the audio can play at the same time. Video kind of cancels video out. Uh, kind of makes sense. Um, so that top layer is the one that's going to be seen. If you want to hide a particular layer, see these little eyes? Click that and just sort of disable it so you can see what's going on underneath it. Um, now I've got two choices. I could either bring the size of this footage up by, remember, clicking on the video, go to effects controls, I could go to scale and make it larger. However, I think it'd be quite fun if, for that little sample where I'm saying die yourself, uh, the video just sort of just zooms across the screen a bit disorientating me. So I'm going to bring my player here to the beginning of that clip and have a look up in the effects panel here. As I move the playhead, the effects playhead also moves. So I could, in theory, move the playhead up here. Now what this allows us to do is to decide uh, where we want to uh, if we want to animate something. Um, now I'm going to, with the position tool here, I am going to have a quick play around with which each of these do. Now this is the sort of the horizontal, the first number. So, I'm going to start it there, so sort of the edge of the video is about halfway in. And I'm going to set what's called a keyframe. If I click this little stopwatch, See over there, the keyframe. If I toggle that down, I can see even what's going on, but it doesn't really matter if you don't want to do that. That sort of gives you a bit more control, but for now I'm just going to leave that there. There's a keyframe, and the keyframe is sort of essentially a frame that tells the computer, right, I want movement to happen here, I want something to happen there. So it's going to start at this point, and I'm going to drag this along to the end of the clip. And at the end of the clip, I'd quite like that to have moved across the screen. So I'm just going to drag that across there to that point. Now, because um, what you'll notice is as I moved it, a keyframe was created automatically. That's really useful to know. You don't have to sort of keep pressing the stop. If we do that, it'll probably delete some of the animation and get confused. So now I've got that moving across. If I want to see what that looks like, I can just go down to the timeline, press play. Okay, that's quite cool. I like that. Now, um, let me drag, get some more video in. Um, Let's start with, let's get some tape reels in. Again, I'm going to decide where to start and end that. Actually, I might just keep that going for a bit. So I'm going to just drag the whole clip in. Um, a bit foolhardy. There we go. Okay. Now, see, if I was doing this properly, I would start going in and making sure there's different bits of video for each of the... Um, different phrases or changes in mood and different bits of music. Uh, for now I'm not going to worry too much about that but I would expect people to pay a bit more care and attention to what's going on and to be aware of the power of the image um, because uh, depending on what the vocals are saying people will associate imagery with that. If it doesn't quite fit uh, people's minds will usually uh, squeeze it into fit so they'll make up different assumptions and different metaphors and things like that. So do be aware of what you're doing um, that you're not creating meaning that you don't necessarily want to impart to your viewer. Anyway, um, okay, so I'm happy with that. Let's do that. Cool, right. I'm now going to bring in um, uh, another bit of sort of animation just because we're on that tip. Now, maudhead.png is uh, a picture of my, my old cat. Um, now, it's a PNG file, it's a file, which is an image file format. PNG is a file format that allows you to have transparency in the background. Uh, so, essentially, if we drag him in, let's see what I mean. Oh, it's quite big. So let's quickly, first of all, go back to effects controls, select the clip, effect controls, motion, scale, zooming down like that. Great stuff. Um, that's a bit better, isn't it? 
Um, now, uh, PIP transparency, you can make images transparent yourself, either in something like Photoshop or uh, mobile apps are good. This is what I made this one in. Uh, really quick and easy, it's called, uh, I think it's Background Eraser, something like that. There's lots of them. Find one you like the look of, it's free. Give it a crack. Um, and export it as a PNG. If you export uh, images out as JPEGs, you won't be able to get any transparency in them, like that. So, what I want to happen here is Maud, the name of the cat, his head sort of zooms in. So, I'm going to have a go at this, at the scale animation that we tried just now. So I'm going to go to the beginning of the clip. Um, let's scale them right down. Press the stopwatch button to toggle the animation. Get a little keyframe. Move that to the end of the clip. And I'm going to make him bigger. And as you see, keyframes automatically made for me. Great stuff. What I might also do with this is include some rotation. So Again, at the beginning of the clip, I'm going to click toggle animation, stopwatch, gives me a keyframe. I'm going to go to the end of the clip and I'm going to rotate that around. Now I can either do that or there's, if you toggle down, you can see the, there's this little wheel, which is quite handy. Now, as you see, as I move this around, up here I've got two times and um, numbers that go up to. 360. Uh, that's essentially the number of times it's done a complete rotation. So let's rotate it around three, four times. You can spin around quite quickly there, I'd imagine. Whoa! Okay, great. Um, what might be quite good with that, I think, is if um, as he came in, he sort of fades in. Now, because we're in the effects panel, it's a good time to show you that working. Uh, as you might have guessed, opacity affects uh, the transparency of things. So I am going to toggle that down. Make sure my playhead's at the beginning of the clip again. Um, and I'm going to, again, toggle uh, opacity. So I've got a keyframe. And I'm going to bring him right down. Now I'm going to bring the playhead across a bit, and at that point I want him to fade up. And I want the same thing to happen here. But I'm thinking right at this point it still needs to be 100, and then I want to zoom in. What you can do with these keyframes is you can copy them. So I'm going to press Command C, or if you right click, you can just copy. And then over here, I can paste the keyframe. And it's the same one, so that says, yep, with that two frames, 100%. I'm coming over here, and I can squeeze him down like that. Now, I could have just gone there and just sort of wiggled that around until I made a keyframe appear, brought it to 100. But just let you know, you can move keyframes around to really sort of tweak your animation and get it looking how you want it to. Okay, I quite like that spooky cat head from space. Right. Now, let me find some more clips. I'm going to show you about blend layers now, so you can blend, um, blending modes rather. Um, if I drag that clip in, see I went a bit off piece there, I just quickly dragged this in from there rather than doing that. Probably shouldn't, but I knew it was quite a short clip, I knew what it's going to look like, so I don't mind. If you know your footage, it's not a problem. Um, and over the top of that, I would like some uh, people talking, telephone operators. So I'm going to do this properly. Double click that. And I'm going to say, well, let's have that clip here. Okay. So that's in. So now lots of people plugging stuff in. Okay, we'll keep that as out and then we'll see. If that can, okay, it's a bit longer than this, so I'm gonna bring that down to the edge of that. That's cool. What I could also do, uh, which is a bit 
probably wouldn't, shouldn't start playing around with it, but you can do if you really want to. This tool here, the rate stretch tool, I can click that and then I can drag footage out, but it will slow that footage down. So it means, oh, let me just hide this so you can see what's going on. It's a bit slower than it would have been, but I don't mind. Um, but I'm going to make sure as well that chops off as I start that chorus. So go back to selection, drag that, drag that in. Brilliant. Remember, you can always zoom in if you want to be right through it. Now, let me just show that top layer. So, obviously, I can't see what's going on underneath that layer. But if I click this layer, go back up to effects, go to opacity again. I don't want to change the opacity, but I could change the blend mode. And that effectively gives the top layer a different uh, quality. Um, these top sections here, dark and multiply, is quite an interesting one. Um, essentially, with that, you're knocking out um, uh, the darker sections and uh, letting things throw through. So let's just see what that looks like. It's quite weird. Um, the ones below that screen, they sort of have a, an opposite effect. So all the dark uh, elements on the top layer sort of uh, don't really show that much, and it means you can sort of brighten things up, knock things out that way. Um, you could try overlay if you wanted to. That's a bit more of a softer idea. Um, have a play around, see what works for you. Um, I think that's quite cool. Quite like that. I'm gonna go with that one. What I might also do with this is I want to increase the contrast because this footage is quite old. It's grey rather than black and white, really. Um, uh, I'll introduce you to some effects now. Uh, down here in our project browser, these are all tabs. These can be sort of scrolled through. Along here, there is one called effects. Now, if I click that little arrow, I can see the effects there. Another way to bring that up would be just to go to Window, find the effects, oops, and it shows up there. Now, I quite like to um, change what's known as the, the levels of the uh, the, the image. Um, uh, so it's the black levels and the white levels. Now, if I go to Video Effects and just the top one there, Adjust. There's a, a levels here. Now to apply these type of effects, these are different from these sort of default uh, baseline sort of foundation effects. These are usually a bit more interesting, but don't just go crazy with effects because um, unless you want a particular bad cheesy aesthetic, which you know, there's nothing wrong with that, um, you really only use these when you know what you're doing with them, um, by and large. So I'm just going to drag these levels. I can either drag that up to the top here. Or I could have just dragged it straight onto the clip. It's up to you, whichever you feel more comfortable with. I wonder if double clicking it will. Yep, double clicking. Well, if, they, if the clip you want to affect is selected, they'll just show the effects here. Now, essentially, all I want to do is have a play around. There's a lot of bits on these levels, but I'm just going to keep it simple at the top here. So my black input, I'm going to increase that a bit. And then my white output, I'm going to bring that back. There we go. Boom, proper hard black and white. It's quite nice, that's what I want. Um, now, this last little section I'm going to bring in. Um, let's go back to my media browser. Oh, no, project, even project window. Um, I'm going to grab the stars. I quite like the stars. Drag that in and drag it in. Okay, what might be quite nice on here is to have um, a bit of green screen action. So, in my media clips, somewhere along here, brilliant, we've got Eddie Wally, the Belgian crooner, um, saying, wow, like that. Um, let's double click on him. And I want him to start just say there, start in point and out point. 
Uh, I want the video and the audio in, so I'm going to drag from the, the main clip. Okay, so this clip's a little shorter than the uh, rest of it, so again, I can change that by um, either increasing the scale of him or and move the position down so he's literally coming up from the bottom of the video. Now, what we don't want is this big green background on him, um, so I'm going to use um, another video effect here. Oh, nope, wrong one. Effects. Um, video effects keying. What that means is you're keying out um, a particular color. So I'm going to go for a color key. Double click that. Um, and the main thing you need to worry about is what color here is the, what color shown here is the color that's going to be taken out of the background. An easy way to find the right colour you're looking for is the eyedropper tool. Okay. Uh, if you find that's not working, this actually is okay, I'll show you why now. But if you think, ah, oh, it's not really picking up properly, then just try and select something with that colour chart uh, that approximates the colour you're after. Now, it's only managed to pick that out because the colour dropper is very precise. And because this is shot just in a studio uh, with a green, literally a green paper background, Depending on where the shadows are and the lights, they're not going to pick up that particular shade of green. But I can increase that colour tolerance with that little bar there. Okay. And I can just drag that as far as I want. I'm not going for the most professional um, chroma keying here, so I won't worry too much about it. But, you know, uh, I can thin the edge down to refine it. I can even feather it to give it a sort of a softer, a softer edging as well. That's great. Let's just play that through. Cool. I'm happy with that. Right. So, um, I think we're about there. Uh, that's generally how to edit video. Um, at the end of the day, have a play around. Don't be afraid to break anything. Um, you won't break anything. Um, but just see what happens. Um, now, assuming I've got to the end of my track, I've made my whole video, I haven't done yet. Oh, before I do anything else, I'm just going to save this. Probably should have saved it a bit earlier. So I'm going to file, save as. Um, I'm going to make sure it's saved in the same place I want it to be before. So my desktop, video edit one. Yeah, it's kind of saved it for me already, but I'm going to make sure it's saved again. So video edit and Make sure, if you do have your hide extension on, untick that on the Mac, um, just because it's handy to know what you're actually saving the file as. And it's a PR, so it's Premiere Project file. Save it. Yeah, place that one. Cool. Now I want to export it so I can view my video. Um, so export, this is like bouncing down essentially. Go to media. Okay. By default, this is trying to push me into a big, crazy, quick time sized clip. I don't necessarily want, I'm going to get black bars at the edge here. It has sort of stretched the size of my video somewhat, which might not be too bad. It, yeah, that's actually quite good. Um, but to be safe, I'm going to go with match sequence settings. Remember at the beginning, we set up our sequence down there, uh, and we decided we wanted to make sure we knew what resolution it was. I'm going to do the same again here. So I'm going to say match sequence settings, and it will make sure it's 640 by 480, um, and it's the same uh, frame rate as the previous one. If for any reason you decide to not use that or go for a different preset, fine. If you want to, you can just have a play around and see what happens. That's fine. Format though should always be QuickTime. Uh, QuickTime is just a good standard file format. Um, it's a good safe bet, it's good for uploading to YouTube, Vimeo, etc. So match sequence settings, I'm happy with that. If you wanted to, for whatever reason, change your audio uh, frequencies, um, bandwidth, bit rates, etc. Feel free, but generally don't touch any of that, you don't need to. Um, unless you start to run into problems. So match sequence settings. Um, here output name, this will tell you where it's going to live again. 
So it'll just stick it somewhere quite random if you're not careful. So I want to know where it is. I'm going to go to desktop, video edit it. I want to call it something useful like wow edit. I know what that is at least. Save and then you can click export. Hopefully that went too long. Da, 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 da. Nine, four, three, two, one. Cool. And then on my desktop, video edit one is my wow edit. And that is just a quick time. If I press that, that'll play. Brilliant. Okay, that's it from me. Um, have fun. Uh, I've seen video. Thank you. Bye.